Internal combustion engines are provided with carburetors whose function is to change the fuel into a fine spray or vapor, mix it with the proper amount of air, and regulate the amount of the mixture supplied to the engine. The term manifold generally refers to a single passage branching into a number of passages. Manifolds may have various arrangements. Passing through the manifold, the fuel-air mixture, or charge, is distributed to the cylinders. The manifold also acts as a chamber in which vaporization of fuel and its mixture with air is further advanced. In this radial engine, the air-fuel mixture, or charge, passes from the carburetor through the supercharger and spiral baffles, which direct the charge into the individual intake pipes. In such an arrangement, the entire passage between carburetor and individual intake pipes may be considered as the intake manifold. In this engine, hot oil scavenged from the engine is passed through a jacket surrounding the manifold and by heating promotes vaporization of the fuel. The intake manifold arrangement on an inverted type of inline engine is here shown. In this model, the charge is heated by exhaust gases passed through a jacket, which encloses a part of the manifold. One modern design provides for heating of the air taken in as a means of preventing the formation of ice in the carburetor. The heat supplied is controlled by a valve which admits in the desired proportions unheated air and hot air from the chamber formed around the exhaust manifold. Control of the heat supplied is very desirable. The chemically correct mixture for combustion of gasoline is 15 pounds of air to 1 pound of gasoline. It will burn within limits of 8 to 18 pounds of air to 1 of gasoline. But the rate of burning decreases as we approach the upper and lower limits, especially on the lean side. In actual engine operation, we do not obtain a perfect fuel-air distribution such as this, where each oxygen particle, white, is in a position to combine with a fuel particle, black. This represents imperfect distribution. Some of the fuel particles are too far separated from oxygen particles to react with them. Maximum power will be obtained by providing an excess of fuel or a rich mixture. This increases the probability of a fuel particle being in position to react with each oxygen particle. Maximum power is provided by consuming all the oxygen, even though some fuel is left over. An excess of oxygen in sufficient quantity to burn all the fuel produces maximum fuel economy. Such a mixture is said to be lean. Imperfect distribution of fuel to the various cylinders is represented by excess oxygen in the right cylinder. By increasing the richness above the chemically correct mixture, power increase in the leaner cylinders usually exceeds the power loss in the richer cylinders, yielding therefore a net power increase. The burned fuel remaining in the cylinder at the end of the exhaust stroke mixes with and dilutes the incoming charge, reducing the probability of fuel particles reacting with oxygen particles. Since this action interferes with combustion, principally under idling or no load conditions, a richer mixture is needed at idling speed.
This graph shows how horsepower varies with the mixture, the lift of the curve representing the leanest mixture which will burn. Maximum power is obtained with a mixture of 12 to 14 parts of air to one of fuel. Further increase in richness results in dropping off of power. With too lean a mixture at full throttle, cylinder temperatures run exceedingly high and cooling systems may be inadequate. With a mixture that is rich enough to consume all the oxygen, more power is obtained and cylinder temperatures run cooler. At cruising speed, it is desirable to obtain the maximum economy of fuel by reducing the fuel consumption per horsepower to the best possible figure. A leaner mixture is therefore required, the ratio being about 16 parts of air to one part of fuel. When idling with throttle closed, the charge is greatly reduced. Expanding to fill the cylinder, its pressure is below atmospheric. Lower pressure and dilution of the reduced charge by the exhaust necessitate a richer mixture for satisfactory combustion. Before studying the details of the carburetor, let us clarify two terms which appear frequently throughout the subject. Suction generally refers to the action or condition existing when pressure is lower than atmospheric. When movement of this piston reduces the pressure in the tube, the liquid is forced up into the tube by atmospheric pressure. A venturi or venturi tube consists of a throat or restriction in a fluid supply line. In this throat, velocity of flow is increased and pressure is reduced. The reduction in pressure or suction in the venturi of a carburetor forces gasoline through the jet. Adherence of globules of gasoline to the jet tip opposes the flow. Opposition is also due to the difference in level of the fuel and the jet tip, which is maintained to prevent leakage. The mixture, delivered by a simple carburetor, becomes richer with increasing engine speed, as suction increases more rapidly than opposition to the flow. A simple carburetor, without compensating devices, consists of an air intake passage, a fuel jet, a throttle, and a float which regulates fuel level in the float chamber. This carburetor must be modified to produce the required mixtures under all conditions, in spite of these varying factors. Carburetors in current use contain a main metering system which supplies a constant air-fuel ratio throughout the power range of the engine. An idling system supplies the rich mixture required at idling speeds. The accelerating system supplies the rich mixture required during rapid acceleration of the engine. The economizer or enrichment valve supplies the rich mixture required at or near full throttle. The mixture control system compensates for altitude. The main metering system maintains a constant air-fuel mixture at all throttle openings throughout the power range, that is, at speeds other than idling speed. Here is the main metering system through which gasoline is supplied to the main discharge nozzle. Principal parts of the system are 
a venturi tube, a main discharge nozzle, the main air bleed, a metering jet which measures or regulates the amount of fuel drawn from the float chamber, and a passage leading to the idling system. The air bleed principle is used to reduce the suction required to lift the liquid by introducing air into the liquid column through an opening in the side. Thus, the total weight of liquid in the column is reduced by the bubbles. Such a construction would still leave a column of liquid to be lifted, which can be eliminated by taking in the air below the surface of the liquid being drawn in. In order to increase the amount of air taken in, a restriction is placed at the bottom of the tube. The size of the air opening and of the liquid opening must be in proper proportion to obtain the right amounts of air and liquid. This principle, when applied to a carburetor jet, takes the form shown. The main discharge nozzle is in the center of the venturi. The air taken in through the fixed aperture and the fuel admitted through the jet system respond equally to changes of pressure. Such a jet, therefore, tends to give a substantially uniform mixture throughout the operating range. With the throttle closed or almost closed, suction on the main discharge nozzle is too low for satisfactory fuel supply. Another device for idling speeds is therefore needed. This direct passage becomes effective when suction in the main metering jet is low as a result of the small movement of air through the venturi. Suction beyond the throttle on the engine side is very high. When the engine is first started, the idling jet furnishes gasoline without air bleed from the space around the idling tube. This provides a rich mixture for starting. As engine speed increases to about one-fourth speed, fuel mixed with air from the idling air bleed is furnished by the idling discharge nozzle. Here, in a cutaway carburetor, is the passage from the main metering jet to the idling storage wells and to the idling discharge nozzle. The amount of fuel admitted at idling speeds is regulated by adjusting this slot in the carburetor wall. The amount of the opening above and below the throttle edge determines the suction on the idle discharge nozzle. Above the throttle, we have the high suction of the intake manifold. Below it, we have the low suction of the venturi when the throttle is closed and air flows in this direction. Therefore, in this position, we will have a low suction on the discharge nozzle. The fuel feed is therefore minimum. As the discharge nozzle is rotated toward the position for a richer idling mixture, a small part of the opening is left to admit air from the venturi, and a larger part of the opening is exposed to the high manifold suction. High suction, therefore, draws more fuel from the idle discharge nozzle. With a given adjustment of the idle discharge nozzle, the throttle position determines the amount of fuel admitted. At lowest speed, with throttle closed, suction is reduced by admission of air through this passage and a small amount of fuel is admitted. As the throttle opens, suction on the idle jet increases up to the point where all of the opening is exposed to manifold suction. 
Idling adjustment is obtained by setting this lever, which controls the position of the nozzle with respect to the throttle. After the throttle opens still wider, to the point of admitting the charge through the main metering jet and the main discharge nozzle, this idling passage becomes inoperative, owing to the great falling off of suction in the intake manifold. The various economizer systems in their present form are really enriching devices which increase the fuel flow at full throttle above that furnished by the main metering jet. The additional fuel may be supplied through an auxiliary nozzle as in this piston type economizer or it may be supplied through an auxiliary passage to the main discharge nozzle as in this needle valve type of economizer. It will be remembered that in order to obtain maximum economy for cruising speeds, we must have ample oxygen to burn all the gasoline, whereas maximum power requires surplus of fuel to consume all the oxygen. The needle valve economizer consists of a needle valve which is opened by the throttle at a predetermined throttle position, permitting a quantity of fuel in addition to that furnished by the main metering jet to mix with the air in the carburetor. The piston type economizer is operated by the throttle. The lower piston acts as a fuel valve, preventing any flow of fuel through the system at cruising speeds. While the upper piston acts as an air valve and permits air to flow through the separate economizer discharge nozzle at part throttle. In this sectionalized carburetor, we see the lower piston and the upper piston of this type of economizer. As the throttle is opened, this spray furnishes temporary enrichment, which will be explained later. The lower piston then uncovers the fuel port so that the fuel is drawn through the system and out the discharge nozzle. The upper piston cuts off the air bleed to the economizer nozzle, thus increasing the suction on the fuel jet. In some modern aircraft carburetors, manifold pressure rather than throttle opening actuates the economizer valve. An external line transmits the blower rim pressure or manifold pressure to the economizer housing where it acts on an evacuated sealed bellows. Compression of the bellows is opposed by this calibrated spring. The action is stabilized by means of this dash pot. As manifold pressure increases and exceeds a certain value, the bellows is compressed and the economizer valve opens, allowing fuel to flow through the economizer metering jet enriching the mixture entering the engine. Under constant full throttle, the maximum airflow through the venturi produces a suction at the main discharge jet, which produces a proportionate and adequate fuel flow through the main metering jet. However, when the throttle is opened quickly, the increased airflow precedes the increased fuel flow, producing a temporarily lean mixture. To counteract this, a temporary enrichment of the mixture during acceleration is accomplished by the accelerating system. The accelerating well is one device for providing the momentary increase in fuel supply. The fuel contained in this well can be drawn quickly through the discharge nozzle without passing through the restriction of the main metering jet.
When the throttle opens suddenly, increased suction draws the fuel directly from this well, producing a momentarily increased fuel feed through the main discharge nozzle. This diagram illustrates the action of one type of accelerating pump. When the throttle is opened suddenly, this sleeve is forced down. Pressure of the fuel inside the sleeve forces the piston down, compressing the spring and clearing these valve openings. Fuel is then forced out through this passage to a discharge nozzle increasing the flow of fuel during acceleration. As soon as the movement of the sleeve stops, the spring returns the piston to normal and closes the valve openings. When the throttle is again closed or partially closed, the sleeve is withdrawn and fuel flows in slowly through the clearance space between the piston and sleeve. This schematic diagram shows the relation between the main metering jet, the accelerating pump, the main discharge nozzle, and the economizer metering jet. Fuel stored in the accelerating pump cylinder is drawn from the fuel supplied by the main metering jet. When the throttle forces the sleeve down suddenly, Fuel is forced through this passage to the main discharge nozzle. At full throttle, fuel flows from the float chamber through the economizer valve and metering jet to the main discharge nozzle. Another type of pump used in some models utilizes a leather piston and a check valve operating in a cylinder at the bottom of the float chamber. When opening of the throttle forces the piston down, gasoline is forced out of the check valve to the discharge nozzle. When the piston moves up, fuel is drawn in past the leather packing. During operation at any fixed throttle position, no fuel passes through the accelerating pump. Using a simplified diagram of a carburetor containing an idling system and a combination accelerating pump and economizer system, we may trace the operation of fuel feed. During starting, fuel flows from the passage surrounding the idle tube without operation of the air bleed. The idle air bleed then comes into operation and a fuel air mixture is fed through the idle discharge nozzle. This flow is increased as the throttle is opened further. There is no discharge from the main discharge nozzle. The economizer piston is at the top of the stroke and the passages are all open but no discharge takes place because of low suction at the economizer discharge nozzle. At this intermediate speed, fuel is being supplied by the main metering system. A small quantity of fuel still flows through the idling system. The economizer piston has moved down, covering the side hole to the economizer well, so that no fuel can flow through this system. When the throttle is opened quickly, this piston forces the fuel up through the accelerating passage and out through the economizer discharge nozzle. At full throttle, fuel is being supplied by the main metering system. There is no flow through the idling system. The economizer piston is at the bottom of its stroke and fuel is drawn through the economizer metering jet and out through the economizer discharge nozzle.
with the unsupercharged engine ascending to higher altitudes, the weight of the air charge decreases. The fuel charge decreases also, but at a lower rate. The mixture therefore becomes richer. This is also true of the supercharged engine above critical altitudes. All airplane engine carburetors have a mixture control whose purpose is prevention of too rich mixtures at high altitudes and affecting a fuel economy in the low power range where cylinder temperatures will not become excessive with a leaner mixture. The back suction type of mixture control places a part of the venturi suction above the fuel in the float chamber opposing the suction at the main discharge nozzle. With the valve closed, no fuel will flow, since obviously the suction is equal through the two passages. One force urging it this way toward the main discharge nozzle, the other urging it this way toward the suction nozzle. With the valve open, Air at practically atmospheric pressure enters. The back suction is reduced and suction in this direction predominates, thereby feeding fuel to the main discharge nozzle. When the mixture control is in full rich position, this valve is wide open. By locating the suction nozzle at this point and placing a restriction at this point, the maximum back suction is reduced so that the valve may be fully closed without stopping the flow of fuel. At any given valve setting, the pressure in the float chamber will be in a fixed ratio to the pressure in the main discharge nozzle, no matter how other conditions, such as throttle opening and atmospheric pressure, vary. The percentage of reduction in fuel suction is constant at all working speeds. In the needle valve type of mixture control, a needle valve regulates the restriction of the fuel passage in series with the restriction of the main metering jet. When the needle is in fully raised position, the mixture control is in full rich position. Rate of flow is then determined by the main metering jet and the economizer valve. Closing the needle valve restricts the fuel passage to this bypass hole, which flow to a fixed rate below that determined by the main metering jet. Manual adjustment of mixture control in engines not equipped with constant speed propellers may be affected by carefully observing the RPM as the mixture control position is varied, leaving the throttle setting constant. The position of the mixture control at which maximum fuel consumption takes place is termed full rich. A graph indicating RPM at various mixture settings shows full rich at this point. The point nearest full rich at which the maximum RPM is noted is termed rich best power. Smooth operation occurs between rich best power and a point 20 to 30 RPM below it toward full rich. From rich best power to best power, RPM will remain constant, but further movement toward lean will cause a loss of RPM. Maximum economy occurs when mixture control is moved from best power toward lean until a drop of 40 to 50 RPM results. From full rich, this mixture control is moved to rich best power, to best power, to maximum economy, to full lean. An evacuated bellows provides one form of automatic mixture control in more modern aircraft carburetors. It may operate with either a needle valve or back suction type of mixture control.
This schematic diagram shows a pressure-sensitive evacuated bellows, which expands as pressure decreases, closing a needle valve, and increasing the opposition to the flow through the main metering jet. A bypass prevents complete cutoff of fuel by the mixture control. In this back suction unit, the automatic bellows control is supplemented by a manual disc type of control, similar to this one, in which a rotating disc moves over a stationary mating disc, varying the size of the opening from the outside air to the float chamber. With this passage open, air at substantially atmospheric pressure is admitted to the float chamber, thereby neutralizing the effect of the back suction nozzle. Suction at the main discharge nozzle produces the maximum flow of fuel. The mixture is then full rich. Manual adjustment from full rich to full lean is accomplished by closing the passage. With outside air cut off from access to the float chamber, the back suction nozzle produces a pressure gradient in this direction, opposing the pressure gradient of the main discharge nozzle and reducing fuel feed to a minimum. Automatic adjustment is accomplished with the valve in the automatic position and this passage open. In the full rich position, air is admitted freely to the float chamber, thereby reducing back suction to a minimum. In the full lean position, the bellows closes this passage and again back suction effectively opposes the fuel feed through the main jets to the main nozzles. In the more modern carburetors, idle cutoff is provided by moving the mixture control to full lean. This cuts off the fuel supply to the idling jet in order to prevent after firing when stopping the engine. In the needle valve type of mixture control, idle cutoff can be provided simply by eliminating the bypass opening. Setting the mixture control at full lean then closes the valve completely and cuts off the fuel supply from all jets. The action of the idle cutoff in the back suction type of mixture control can be illustrated by a diagram avoiding complications of construction. If we applied suction to the liquid in this chamber through this passage with the top passage closed, the liquid would be drawn into the pump. If, however, we open the top passage, the suction in this direction equals the suction in this direction, and the liquid does not move. Similarly, in this back suction type of mixture control, this passage is closed in all positions of the mixture control except full lean. Fuel continues to flow through the idling jet when the throttle is closed to this position. Idle cutoff in this system is provided by placing the mixture control beyond full lean position, thereby opening this passage from the float chamber to this point beyond the throttle. Reduction in pressure on the fuel in the float chamber by manifold suction equalizes pressure at the idle discharge nozzle with that in the float chamber. Since the pressure gradients indicated by arrows in the two passages are approximately equal and opposed in direction, no fuel flows through the idling jet.